everybody welcome back to another solo war gaming show homage video so basically in my homage videos i look at games and products and toys and just things that have come and gone in my uh time in the hobby and in gaming and today i'm going to bring you something kind of interesting this is called mech warrior uh solaris 7 and this is based on the BattleTech franchise, but it was a game created using the WizKids uh, property, or I should say maybe the WizKids proprietary mechanics. And I thought this was, when it came out, I thought this was a perfect mix of two excellent systems. And oddly enough, I've, I've played very little of each. I don't think I've ever played a full game of Mech Warrior or a full game of BattleTech, but I've also I've always enjoyed the lore. I've always enjoyed the uh, products, meaning you know what the mechs look like, even the pilots of the mechs and so forth. So uh, I do remember when Mech Warrior came out. I I, I had got big into uh, Mage Knight, which was the beginning kind of of the click bases, and I had also. Uh, I think Hero Clicks was out at the time as well. And I was also collecting Hero Clicks. And I just, for some reason, I recall with Mech Warrior and the, the blind blisters or boxes that they used to sell these in, I never kind of got into it. But one of the things I thought was real cool a mechanic that they introduced, and I, I might not be able to show it to you in this lot, but I'm trying to pick up some more of these, was a heat dial on the basis and that is actually something that's very big in, in BattleTech. if you ever played BattleTech as a role-playing game or even i think a miniature game is the heat dial so to have that implemented in here whereas your heat went up your other stats would be affected i just thought that was a great marriage of the two different systems and so today what we're going to take a look at is the whiz kids uh presentation of mech warrior Kind of what you would get in a starter box uh, of the mechs. And then we're going to look at some mechs that I have. So what we're looking at first is essentially the contents of a Mech Warrior starter box. I didn't get the box, uh, meaning with, this, with, with the purchase, but this would have been in a box. So the first thing we have is called the Ruse of Warfare, where you are going to look at Mech Warrior Dark Age. These are your factions. Uh, they are going to give you a quick class on the dials. So I think, I think this would be your heat dial here. Uh, they have the vehicles come on these oblong slots. The troops come on the circular shot slots and your mechs are going to come on the large round slots. Uh, yeah, but it talks about your heat dial right there. So... And this is your heat dial going down here. So you get your minimum range, your max. So it's kind of cool because your heat dial will affect all of this. Now, I don't know if it actually affects the turn when you turn this or if this is just a modifier that you have to remember because you're taking heat. So it talks about building your battle force with the mech, with the vehicle, with troops. And because this was a kind of a combined armed games, I actually thought this was just a perfect system because otherwise you're trying to keep track of stats for soldiers and vehicles and mechs and, you know, it can be a lot. But when you have it right there in their base, I mean, it's just every turn you're going to adjust their stats. So it's a pretty long rule book. I think for Mage Knight, this is probably one of the longest rule books that they've done uh, for the Mage Knight brand. They then get a, a mat, which is obviously kind of a paper, glossy coated mat. I actually have a, I think I have like a Battletech uh, nylon mat, which I don't know if it would work with this. Uh, so it says areas that would block your line of sight. So you see like the trees and the lakes deployment zones and then i like this buildings and this is kind of cool because actually you could sit model buildings right down in here so if you ever played a game like space marines uh or maybe drop zone commander you could literally just drop those building profiles in there but you don't have to 
And so that's actually pretty cool. We get the mat and the rule book. Uh, the next thing you would get is kind of, I think this is like a quick reference sheet. It talks about special equipment, armor piercing, energy damage. So there is a lot. Now this would actually be kind of the equivalent of your uh, powers and abilities card from uh, Heroclix. So in Hero Clicks, you had like powers for strength, powers for movement, powers for defense, and so forth. And so that's what this is on your mechs. But obviously, it has more appropriate names and things. But, you know, it would tell you if there's an armor piercing. So this unit ignores all defense special equipment while making a ranged combat attack. Looks like we get... Uh, I don't know, maybe this is just a quick flyer advertising another one. Looks like a convention in Arlington, 2003. Wow. And then you get the rules of competition, which I'm not exactly sure. This is probably specific to the Solera 7. It says Mech Warrior Solera 7 gives you a different way to play with your Mech Warrior miniatures. Solera 7 uses many, but not all, of the concepts and components common to Mech Warrior Age of Destruction. It even introduces some new mechanics and gameplay options. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, this Solaris 7 basically is another way to play the game. And I mean, these rules are pretty thick. This is 45 pages. So, And then you get a die, which I'm not sure if you need that die or not. So that is kind of your accessories. Now we're going to take a look at the miniatures. Okay, so this is what I got, and I bought this lot at an online auction, and the guy really packed it nice, so I figure we'll just take it all out one at a time. So the first thing here is a long time artillery piece, and you can see these are all pre-painted, and actually pretty well. This is another long time artillery piece, so we're not going to dwell on that. This is a mech. We've got our first mech. So I did get some mechs. This is a Centurion. Look at that. This is a Centurion. That's his heat dial there. So let's see here. If he's on this. And he takes heat. So it doesn't move the dial. But it, it's like a modifier to this number that goes across I think. So that's pretty easy to read. What else do we got? Is this another Centurion? No, this is a an Ogre Ogre Cod. I can't read the other part of this. KDK. An Ogre KDK mech. Now, if you want to hear about Battletech and Battletech tactics, take a look at Wargamer Fritz's channel. He does excellent uh tactics videos on playing Battletech. Now, I think he's talking about the miniature game, not this one. But uh, look at this. This thing looks sweet. This is called the Zebler Fast Strike Tank. It almost looks like something the, El I mean, the Eldar or the, the Elves would use in 40K. See what we got next. Oh, I like this too. The MHI Amphibious APC. So, if I can get through the rules, I'm definitely going to try to play some games of this. It's just you want to learn the rules. Oh, this is nice. And the pieces move. So, if you see here, these move. You can direct them. This is a, what is that, Sizen? This looks like some kind of strike hovercraft vehicle. Man, this is nice. This is nice. So this is a, this looks like a tank for sure. A pretty heavy looking one. This is the sniper. Oh, this is artillery. Sniper artillery. So you got a little bit of the bend in the barrel there. But this is pretty thick. So I mean, you could try to hot water. Or you might could just force it into shape. But that is a huge artillery piece. This is another one. I think this is another. Uh, it's a Kelswa assault tank. Wow. Look at these. Look at these miniatures, man. 
You know, lately I've when I've gotten uh, Mage Knight figures and things, I've been popping them off their bases. But there's no way I'd take these guys off their bases. I mean, this is just too classic not to play. This is a Saxon armored personnel carrier. Looks like something from like Space Odyssey. 2001 Space Odyssey. Let's see. Well, now we're getting into our figures. And this is what I like too. It's not just infantry. There's also like guys in power armor. So we have the Great Death battle armor. And the Halberg. Halberg, Halberg battle armor. Man, look at those. Those are excellent looking miniatures. Now these are some regular just grunts. This is uh, the combat technicians. So they might can get your mechs back up and running. Man, I am so glad I got this. And I actually got a pretty good deal on them. So these are some gnome, gnome battle armor. They almost look like space marines. And this is... What are these? Flamer team. Wow. Wow. Now, you might could damage a mech's internals with that if you survive to get close enough. And this is a PAL suit, P-A-L suit. So a lot of you, if you've never played this, have probably never seen the quality of these miniatures. And these are painted. Remember, guys, look at this. Look at that. Track bike. Gotta be kidding me. And here. Sorry, I popped the thing, popped my uh, gimbal. This is a SRM team. And we have another, I think this is another track bike. So you could ride them, you could probably uh, deploy them in pairs. Let's see what we got here. Wow, this looks like something from Star Wars. This is a hover bike squad. Wow. So you see the pilot back here. And we have another track bike. So I'm not going to show you that. Even though that was a different color one. This is a Mark II battle armor. I really like the guys in battle armor. We have, wow, look at these guys. Shock troops. Painted shock troops. This is a Scout ATV. So you get all kinds of combined arms and infantry. This is Cavalier battle armor. And I think they have like their faction symbols and things on here. So if you're trying to see what faction they would go with, there should be a symbol on there. Because different factions will have different armor, or different vehicles. So on the right, we have the more Mark II battle armor, which we've seen. And these are sn a sniper team. So you might could use those to snipe off some of those shock troops. Oh, this is nice. This is a Salamander battle armor. Just one single unit of battle armor. You could probably this thing march beside one of your mechs. And then support. Kind of keep the infantry at bay. Let your mech concentrate on other mechs. I think Wargamer Fritz would approve of that tactic. This is more Mark II battle armor. I don't know. Was the other ones Mark II or Mark IV? I think they were Mark II. This is, oh, look at this. So this is a long-range missile battery. Wow, I would love to fire that as I saw a mech approaching. A minigun psycho? <laughs> oh, man, you could go through some battle armor with that, I would think. And so we are getting to the end, and it looks like some of this stuff is kind of off the sprue, but I don't think it's broke. No, this doesn't look broke. This is a uh, Scotty Swift Attack Virtual Takeoff and Landing. And this is actually a big craft. Compared to the mechs, I mean, this, this is comparable in size. This thing is huge. 
So then this goes in there like that, which I really like the way they did that. That was very smart in their design. And then this goes in here like this. And this is probably why it still works and it's not broken. And that is a virtual takeoff and landing craft. So this is actually the first air unit we have other than, you know, obviously if the mechs have some air capabilities. So I'd like to look at that. A virtual takeoff and then that thing looks big. Like I said, that thing looks like it could put some fire on a mech. Oh, I think this whole next thing is air units of some sort. Let's see. Oh yeah, what is this thing? What do we have here? So we have another one that we will snap in there. And then this goes here. And this guy is blasting off. Almost like a Mandalorian. This is called the Sith Battle Armor. So this thing gives you some flight capabilities. And you can turn this right on the rod. So that it faces whatever way you want. And I think this probably has something to do with the facing as well for the base. Wow, this is actually better than I thought because when I looked at the auction, I really couldn't see all of the miniatures. Like I could see most of the armor and so that was kind of what I bought it on. But man, I am so glad that I'm getting a mix of everything. Here's another virtual takeoff and landing. It's a different color. Scotty Swift attack. I imagine it's the same craft though. The other one was a Scotty Swift attack. Yeah, so that was just a different color. Let's see here. This one looks like it might be a little different. Uh, Cardinal Transport. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know. It looks like the pieces are either broke or, or disassembled on this one, but. Wow, look at this. This is a transport. Look at that. It even has a little sticker. Which I think somebody might have put that on later. I doubt if that came with it, but it might have. I don't know. But this is a transport, guys. Look at that. That is the uh, Cardinal Transport. That is a nice size vehicle. And I don't know what it is. It has some kind of other accessories that I think those broke off, but... I'm not worried about that. Let's see what we got. We got two more to go. Oh, a helicopter. I love these helicopters. I saw these in another auction that I lost. I was trying to win it, but it got a little too little too rich for my blood cuz these can go for some some money if, if if you know, if certain people see them. Sometimes you can get them for little or nothing. Other times, you know, you're going to have to pay. But look at that. Look how they did that. That is so sweet. You know, and this thing turns. So, and this is a Shun Transport VTOL. Now, I really love the design on these. Some of this stuff, they just went whack. Like, they put this thing down the tail fin going down the opposite way, which is just whack. Just, just a cool looking design. And then we have one more. So, let's get the box out. Shake it. Nothing coming out. And so this one looks kind of interesting because we have this VTOL, which is, I think, just another Scaldi. Yeah, so this is just another Scaldi with kind of the attachments coming out. I think this is a swift attack. But uh, there's also a unit of Cavalier battle armor. So it looks like one of them popped off. But, uh, I don't know. I could glue them back on and not bother with it. But that is, that is the battle tech. So let's just take a look at everything. So this is everything we got, guys, or at least as much as I could get into the, uh, frame. But, uh, I don't know. I doubt if this was, like, in one box. I know it's not a starter box, but... You know, this is obviously uh, somebody's collected this, you know, a collection. But uh, it did give you a good idea of the different mechs and variety of figures and units in the game. Now, obviously, being Mech Warrior, we only got two mechs. So I, I don't know if this would actually be playable. 
uh, in a game or competition because the mechs do tend to be quite powerful uh, from what I understand about battle battle tech. Uh, so you would probably want to get some more mechs. And I do know the mechs tend to go for a little more, probably for that reason. Uh, but, I mean, I, I like what I got. It's definitely a good place to start. Uh, you know, maybe if you're playing a, a smaller point game, you'd have one mech, one vehicle, and a couple of uh, ground units. But, yeah, this is just a, a homage to a system that... Uh, you know, when it, in its day, it was actually quite popular. I, I, I recall specifically going to a convention at Gen Con, and they were doing a tournament for this late into the evening. And I don't know if I've told that story before where I had the two guys team up on me and basically take my take my stuff out. But this is what we were playing, was this Mech Warrior by WizKid. So uh, in its day, it was it was very well received. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care of yourselves, and God bless.